Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into something pretty interesting. Today it's all about wash trading in crypto. We found some research that really breaks down how this whole thing works and, well, it affects everyone. Yeah. So this research is fascinating because it kind of shows wash trading as this illusion, like a, almost like a magician's trick. Okay, I'm intrigued. I love a good magic trick. Okay, imagine a magician, right? And they're like clapping with one hand to make it sound like there's this big applause. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fake a crowd. Gotcha. That's basically wash trading, the same person or group buying and selling. At the same time. To make it look like there's all this activity and volume. So it's not two different people going back and forth. Nope. Same entity, both sides. Sneaky. Why would they even bother, though? What's the point? Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. Well, there are a bunch of reasons, actually. Sometimes it's to, like, trick investors, make it seem like there's this, like, huge demand. So they see all this action and think, oh, I got to get in on this. Exactly. Or sometimes they're trying to manipulate the price, you know, make a cryptocurrency look way more valuable. Pump it up artificially. Exactly. But really, it all comes down to distorting the market, making it super hard to figure out what's really going on. A smoke and mirrors kind of thing. Yeah, pretty much. And get this, this research traced wash trading all the way back to like the dinosaur days of crypto, the Mint Gox exchange in 2011. Wow. I know, right? <laughs> Practically since the beginning. But the really crazy part, the paper said that even though these fake trades might only be like a small percentage of all the trades, right? they could make up like 60% of the daily volume sometimes. That's a huge difference. Yeah, it's wild. It really shows how important it is to be able to like spot wash trading, <laughs> you know, catch it in action. Well, how do they even do that? How do researchers spot this stuff? So this paper looked at two main methods. One focuses on the roundness of trade sizes. Basically, if someone's manipulating the market, they tend to use like nice round numbers. Wait, so you're telling me that a trade for say exactly 100 Bitcoin would be more suspicious than a trade for like 137 point something Bitcoin. Exactly. Legitimate trades usually have these like random weird numbers. So if you see a bunch of trades for like a thousand Bitcoin all lined Ooh, up. Red flag. It's too perfect, you know, doesn't happen naturally. That's so interesting. And the second method uses something called Benford's law. I'll admit math isn't my strong suit care to break it down for us non-mathematicians. Of course. So Benford's law basically says that in naturally occurring data sets, the first digits of numbers follow a certain pattern. So like the number one should show up more often as the first digit than say the number nine. Yeah, something like that. It gets a little complicated, but basically if we see a big deviation from this pattern in like trade data. That's our cue to maybe dig a little deeper. Yeah, it could mean someone's messing with the numbers. Okay, so this is all fascinating from like a research perspective. But why should the average person, the average investor, care about wash trading? What's the big deal? Well, wash trading can create this really misleading picture of the market. And that can lead to people making, you know, bad investments. Because they think an asset is way more popular than it really is. Exactly. They see this big volume and think, oh, this is hot. Got to get in. But it's all fake. So this research is about, like, arming us with the knowledge to spot those tricks. Yes. To see through the illusion. Makes sense. So it's not just about being fooled. It's about being able to make smarter choices. Right. And this paper, it actually goes even further. It looks at what drives wash trading in the first place. There's got to be some logic behind it, right? You can't just be <laughs> random. <laughs> yeah, there are definitely patterns. One of the biggest factors, market volatility. They found that, especially with Bitcoin and Ethereum, higher volatility equals more wash trading. Huh. But why? You'd think that when the market's already crazy, it'd be harder to manipulate. Well, actually, it's the opposite. When the market's all over the place, it's easier to hide fake trades, like trying to sneak out of a concert during the loudest song. Ah, uh, using the chaos as cover. <laughs> exactly. They also found a connection between, like, media attention, capital inflows, and wash trading. 
So when everyone's already hyped up and pouring money in... They try to pump it up even more. Wow, playing right into the frenzy. And it gets even more interesting when you look at specific cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin and Ethereum. They consistently show high levels of wash trading, especially when their prices are going up. Yeah, those are the big names, right? They attract the most attention, the most speculation. Exactly, but it's not the same for every cryptocurrency. Oh, interesting. Give me an example. Take XRP. They found this big spike in wash trading during its legal battle with the SEC. Like they were trying to make it look stronger than it really was. Possibly, yeah. Trying to counter the negative news and project this image of, like, stability, even with all the legal stuff going on. Wow, so it's not just about making a quick profit. It's about, like, shaking the story, too. Exactly. And that's what makes this whole thing so interesting. It's not just numbers and algorithms. It's about psychology and how easily narratives can be manipulated. It's way more nuanced than I initially thought. I'm already looking at the crypto market differently. That's what this kind of research does, right? It opens up new perspectives. And we've just scratched the surface. I can't wait to dig in some more. You know, it's interesting to think about this. Like, wash trading. It's not just a crypto thing. Oh, really? It happens elsewhere. Oh, yeah. It's been around forever in all sorts of markets. Think about it. The idea is pretty basic, right? Yeah, just artificially pumping up the volume to create a buzz. Exactly. And that's been happening for, well, centuries. Wow, that's crazy. But what, even before computers and stuff? Oh, yeah. Like, way back in the 1800s, there's this example from the New York Stock Exchange. The OG stock market. What happened? So these traders, they would basically like team up. They'd trade stocks back and forth amongst themselves just to create this frenzy. To trick other investors. Exactly. Make them think there was all this demand when there really wasn't. Wow. So it's the same playbook, just different actors. Right. And it shows that even though like regulations and stuff have gotten better over time. The motivation is still the same. Exactly. Greed never goes out of style. That's true. So how do we protect ourselves? As investors, I mean. Well, knowledge is power, right? The more you understand about how markets work, the better. Okay, so do your research. Don't just jump into things blindly. But are there any, like, practical tips, red flags to watch out for? Definitely. One thing is a sudden surge in trading volume, especially if there's no real reason for it. Like no positive news or anything? Right, because remember, that volume can be totally fake. So don't just chase the hype. Look for a legitimate reason behind the price movements. Exactly. Another thing is diversification. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. Spread out the risk. But what about choosing assets in the first place? How do we know what to invest in? Well, you got to dig into the fundamentals. Look beyond the headlines and, you know, all the hype. Don't just go for the shiny object. Exactly. And if something sounds too good to be true. It probably is. Exactly. Be wary of those, like, get-rich-quick schemes. Easy to get caught up in the excitement. And don't be afraid to talk to a financial advisor. Get some professional guidance. That makes sense. It's not just about protecting ourselves, though. It's about protecting the whole system. Right. Market integrity is crucial. When people lose trust in the markets, well, everything suffers. No one wants to invest if they think the game is rigged. Exactly. We all have a role to play in fighting this stuff. It can't just be on the regulators, right? Right. Individuals can make a difference, too. How so? Be vigilant. If you see something fishy, speak up. Report it. Don't be afraid to be a whistleblower. So we all have a responsibility to keep things honest. Exactly. You know, going back to this research paper, the stuff about XRP and how wash trading spiked during their legal battle, it really shows that manipulation isn't always just about making money. It's about controlling the narrative. Yeah. Influencing how people see things. And that's a key takeaway. Markets aren't just about numbers. They're about psychology and emotions and stories. It's all connected. So we got to look beyond the numbers, think critically, question everything. Exactly. Don't take anything at face value. That's a great reminder. We've talked about wash trading in markets, but could it really go beyond just finance? It's definitely possible. Like, think about social media for a second. It's all about what likes and followers. That's the currency there. It's all about that clout as the kids say. Right. So imagine someone or even a bot creating all these fake accounts. Just to pump up the number. Exactly. To make a profile or a post look way more popular than it really is. So it's like creating this like fake buzz, this illusion of support. Exactly. And that can have real world consequences, especially when social media influences like so much these days. Yeah. It shapes opinions, voting decisions. It's powerful stuff. Right. Is there any way to like spot this social wash trading? To protect ourselves from it. Well, some platforms are trying to, like, 
crack down on fake accounts and bots, but it's tough. Yeah, it feels like a constant battle. It is. But we can still be, like, smarter consumers of information. How so? It feels like we're just bombarded with stuff all the time. It comes down to, like, critical thinking, media literacy. Don't just believe everything you see online. Question everything. Exactly. Look for evidence. Consider different perspectives. If something seems, you know, too hyped up or one-sided, dig deeper. Don't let the algorithms think for you. Right. And, you know, this whole thing reminds me of another area where wash trading might be happening. Online reviews. Oh, yeah. The land of five star everything. Yeah. So many glowing reviews. Right. But how many of those are real? How many are actually from, like, genuine customers? That's a good point. How would this wash trading work with reviews? Well, think about it. A business could create fake accounts to post positive reviews for their own product. Or negative ones for their competitors. Exactly. To try and sway potential customers. So it's like creating this fake version of reality, right? It is. And it can be tough to spot those fake reviews. Yeah, some of them are really convincing. Right. But there are some things to watch out for, like really over-the-top language. Or if a bunch of positive reviews all appear at the same time, that's kind of suspicious. So once again, it's on us to be careful. Do our homework. Yeah. Check if the reviewers are verified buyers, if they have a history of, like, leaving thoughtful reviews. Be an online detective? Exactly. The Internet's a powerful tool, but it's also full of, like, potential traps. Well, this has been a real eye-opener. It's amazing how this whole idea of wash trading, it goes way beyond just the financial market. It really does make you think. It shows that in this digital age where information is everything, we got to be extra careful about what we believe. We have to be, like, more aware than ever of how easily we can be manipulated. Well said. And on that note, we'll leave you to ponder all the ways that this wash trading concept might be at play in your own life. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive, everyone. 